understanding work orders. In this video, I'm going to be talking about what work orders are, how they can be used in Arthur, and how you can best utilize them to help you manage your portfolio within Arthur. What is a work order? A work order is the digital equivalent of a worksheet that would be given to a contractor to carry out work on a job. Where can work orders be added? So there's a few places we can add work orders in Arthur. Probably the most common place uh, would be by going to the work orders tab on the left hand menu bar. Opening the work order index page and add work order in the top right. Here you fill out all of the details of the work order before you invite your contractor. Another way to uh, add a work order would be to an expiring certificate. Uh, so this would be if you need a contractor to renew the certificate. Uh, you can get here by going to properties on the left hand side, expanding that and certificates just below. Uh, as you can see, I already have expiring filtered um, and this is expiring. So you drop the arrow down on the right hand side and add work order. As you can see at the top, it's not asking us to specify the relationship because it's been create, created directly from the certificate. So Arthur knows that that is the relationship to the work order. Another way would be by adding a work order directly from a property or unit. So you can do this by going into the property or unit. More in the top right. And add work order. As you can see, again, it's not asking us for the relationship because we've created it directly from the unit. So Arthur knows that that's what the relationship is. The final way to add, an, add a work order would be directly from a task. This will be particularly useful when tenants raise issues through the app, the tenant app. Uh, these come through to the property manager side as tasks. Um, so potentially a tenant has raised a task where a uh, we can use this, a shower, a leak in the shower, and we need a plumber to go and fix that. So we'll open up the task and in the top right hand corner, add work order. Again, it's not asking us for the relationship because it will go on the relationship of the task, which is specified within the task on the right hand side. OK. Who has access to work order information? Contractors can view all information. Property owners can view and approve work orders. They do not see contractor details or contact details. Tenants can only see the contractor that has been allocated to the job and any documents that you have decided to share with them. Uh, we've included in preferences the ability to set default positions when creating a work order. These include who sees what in terms of files, and the automatic attachment of files from a task to the newly created re related work order. You can find these preferences by going to your company name in the top left. Preferences. Scroll down to work orders. And you can set your preferences in here by selecting either on or off and then saving. Can work orders be scheduled to reoccur? Uh, work orders can be scheduled to reoccur um, on a specified frequency. Um, so if we go into a work order, um, and as you can see here, work order time setting. So if you uh, select this is a scheduled work order, uh, then it will ask you for the frequency that you want this to repeat on. Uh, so for example, we have every two weeks on a Monday, this work order will generate. Uh, end date just below is specifying when you want this to stop generating. So for example, 25th of the 12th, 21 will be, uh, this work order will not generate beyond this day. If you select no end date, then it will just be up to you to come into Arthur and manually make that inactive. And um, just below work orders, underneath the work order tab, uh, we. We have scheduled work orders. This is where you can manage all of your scheduled work orders and make them inactive. Um, and you can also add a scheduled work order from here in the top right. Um, exactly the same as a normal work order, uh, except it just has this bit pre-ticked for you. 
How can transactions be added to work, a work order for a job? Um, so there's two ways this can be done. Uh, if your contractor is using the app, uh, they can themselves raise the invoices uh, on their end to the work order. Um, for more information on this, please see Knowledge Base article, uh, how can a contractor add a transaction to a work order through the app? Um, but if your contractor isn't using Arthur, uh, then you will need to be adding these transactions to the work order. Uh, this can be done by going into the work order, work orders, uh, going to the statement. Uh, it is always defaulted to the contractor statement. Add a transaction in the top right. Select your transaction type, uh, fill in all the relevant information and save in the bottom right. So now I'm going to add a quick work order and just explain what each of the fields mean. So because I'm adding this work order directly from the work order page, I'm going to have to specify the relationship. I'll just use that one. Uh, as you can see, I am being told, uh, notified that there are no access details found for this property. Um, this will link to when we get to the bottom of the page. Um, so just keep that in mind. Bear with me on that. Um, fill in the title. Um, uh, a description of the work order. This is all for the contractor to see. Work order service. As you can see, this does have a road star next to it, so it does need to be filled in. Um, we think we've covered most bases in terms of contractors, so it's just about finding and um, the one that is most relevant. Uh, again, we have our scheduled work order. If we tick that, then it will give us the option to repeat this on a specified basis, um, select the day and obviously your end date. For this particular example, I will leave this unticked. Um, again, this is all for the contractor's information. Uh, these Fields here are not, uh, we, they, they are optional, they're not required. So this can be saved and created without entering the. Um, but again, this is all optional for the contractor. Um, so you, this is the start date when you expect the job to be started. And this will be when you expect it to be finished. And then the budget that you have for the work order. So you can fill all that out if you want to, but again, it is optional. Same with the ones below, the allocated time the actual time it took and the price per hour. Next, we have any images or documents we want to add to the work order. Um, this will be particularly useful, like I say, if you have a uh, issue in a property, uh, you can take a picture of it and add it to the contractor and make it visible to the contractor so that they can see uh, the images. So that could be useful for them. And we, if you, another thing to know, if you create a work order from a task and the task has documents on it, uh, at the bottom, you will get a ticky box that asks you, would you like to pull the documents and images from the task to the work order? Obviously, if you leave that ticked, ticked it will do that. It will copy them to the work order available for the contractor to see. Um, so now we have our uh, actions at the bottom. So is this an emergency? So if you tick that, that will go through to the um, uh, to the contractor as an emergency. Uh, quote is required. Uh, so basically, if that's ticked, uh, the contractor will have to provide a quote before they accept the job. Uh, and then it will be down to yourselves or the property owner to accept that quote. Um, just below that, share documents and images with contractors. So again, uh, the reason we have that there is if you just want to be using Arthur as a database, um, and you have documents or images that you want to keep into this work order for your own reference, um, you would leave that unticked. Uh, but most of the time, you'll probably leave that ticked so the work, uh, contractor can see the images, um, which may help them um, decide what sort what they need to bring with them or something like that before they attend the job. High tenant details from contractor. Uh, so obviously, the tenants within the um, unit uh, we can share the details to the contractor so they know who they're visiting. Uh, share unit and property access details with the assigned contractor. So this links back to this notification at the top. It's I'm being notified um, that we don't have access details on this uh, because this is pre-ticked because of my preferences. It gives me that 
notification straight away. Uh, but what that would be is if you do have access details on the property or unit, um, then that will share them, share that with the contractor. For example, if you have a block of flats uh, and the communal door has a code, uh, you could share that with the contractor so they can get into the building. Um, just below that, share documents and images with the property owner. So that will be based on obviously the relationship, who the owner is of the property. Um, and if I leave that ticked, whatever documents and images we have in here will be shared with the owner. OK, and then just below to that, notify property manager that will send a notification. So once we're happy, we've uh, filled out everything, we can assign a contractor. So now we have uh, in this part, these are my contractors. We also have public contractors uh, and then all contractors, which will just be a mix of both. Uh, my contractors are contractors that you guys have added into Arthur and public contractors are contractors that are in Arthur already uh, for you guys to use if you need to. Um, I'll go back to my contractors. Uh, you can select more than one, uh, but obviously only one contractor will be able to accept the job. So you can uh, invite as many as you want, but only one contractor will be able to accept the job. OK. And now you have your con, uh, your work order here with all of the information. Uh, you can add notes, uh, things like that to it. You have your activity log at the bottom. Uh, any automation, which I don't have there. Uh, as I said earlier, looks very similar to a task. You have your relationship in the top right uh, and you have all of your tabs on the left to manage your work order. OK, thank you for listening.